Good afternoon. This webinar offers closed captioning. To enable closed captioning, click on the live transcript button on the bottom of your screen and choose your preferred method. Welcome to the Chicago Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection webinar. Please note any website or email that I mentioned will be posted in the chat. For those seeking business license assistance, you can visit the Small Business Center here at City Hall or call 312-74-GO-BIZ. Business license can also be applied for or renewed online at chicagobusinessdirect.org. If you are a part of the BACP Entrepreneurial Certificate Program, you can get credit for joining this webinar by sending an email to bacpoutreach at cityofchicago.org. To learn more about this program, please visit chicago.gov forward slash business education. This webinar is being recorded and will be available at youtube.com forward slash Chicago BACP. We encourage all attendees to ask questions. Please use the chat box and send your questions to all panelists. There will be a Q&A session at the end of this presentation. Please note that the views, information, and opinions expressed during this webinar are solely those of the presenter and does not necessarily represent the official policies of the Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. Today's webinar is entitled Concessions 101, Doing Business at the Airport. At this time, I will now turn this webinar over to Glenn for us to begin. Good afternoon and thank you. Uh, my name is Glenn Rineski. I am the Assistant Commissioner for Concessions for O'Hare and Midway International Airports. And I wanna welcome you to our third webinar uh, in 2022. Um, as you can see, we have the agenda up on the bulletin on the board and we will be going through all of these topics and they'll be presented to you by our concessions team here at O'Hare. Uh, an important element is that this year, 2022 and 2023, is going to be in a, a very aggressive year in which we're going to put out many RFPs. So this is very, uh, you're going to get a wealth of information here. And please feel free at the end to ask any questions and we'll accommodate you and welcome again. And with that, I want to turn it over to Castelia Serna, Deputy Commissioner of Concessions. Thank you so much, Glenn. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Mayor Lori Lightfoot, Commissioner Jamie Elry, and the entire team at the Chicago Department of Aviation, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you to our Concessions 101 workshop webinar. I am Castalia Serna, Deputy Commissioner of Concessions with the Chicago Department of Aviation. I'm excited to be with you here today. It's been a very busy summer season at O'Hare and Midway International Airports. The Terminal 5 expand, expansion is well on its way as we look ahead the rest of 2022 and into 2023. There are many exciting things happening in our airports that my team will touch upon today. We are proud to continue providing the Traveling Guests, a world-class concessions program at both O'Hare and Midway Airport by giving them the ultimate experience for both domestic and international travel. We at CDA, the Chicago Department of Aviation, always strive to be innovators in the airport ecosystem as we go all out to bring the very best in concessions offerings to our world-class airports. From our restaurants and shops right up to the gates, our airports create the first and lasting impressions of our great city. We remain dedicated on bringing opportunities to our Chicago residents. We are, committee, we are committed to providing equity and inclusion with our concession contracts by focusing on diversity. And we are working diligently to bring new ideas and new owners and operators into the fold. I'm going to pass it on to my amazing team now. You'll be hearing from our rock star concessions team, starting with our concession project administrators, Mark Wright, Russell Johnson, Michael Stein, and Daniel Perez. We will also have with us Glenn Ranuski, Assistant Commissioner of Concessions at CDA, and Joe Crump, Managing Director from Unison Consulting. They've put on an amazing presentation for you today. 
At the end, we will have time for questions and answers. So please don't hesitate to ask questions. Thank you again for your interest in operating at O'Hare and Midway International Airports. And with that, I'll pass it on to Daniel Perez, who will kick us off with O'Hare operations. Take it away, Daniel. Thank you, Casalia. My name is Daniel Perez, Project Administrator with the CDA, and I will give you a look at our operations at O'Hare. O'Hare is served by nearly 50 of the world's leading airlines and is a major intra-alliance connecting gateway, including American Airlines and their Star Alliance partners, American, uh, I'm sorry, to backtrack, United Airlines with their Star Alliance partners, and also American Airlines with One World partners, and also Delta Airlines uh, Skype team. O'Hare also has multiple non-aligned airlines, as you can see towards the bottom of the screen. And here's a fun fact, O'Hare is a dual hub uh, for United and American Airlines. In uh, 2021, there was over 69 million passengers that traveled to O'Hare and Midway airports. Of that, O'Hare had approximately 54 million employments. O'Hare and Midway International Airports provided direct and non-stop non service to over 200 cities around the world. Over 50% of O'Hare's passengers have connected flights and never leave the terminals, which is a pretty captive audience, if I do say so. So here's a big picture look at the O'Hare Airport terminals. In the beginning, we have, in the upper left, we have Terminal 1. Terminal 2, you can see on the lower left-hand side. Terminal 3 in the center. And we have Terminal 5 on the lower right. And now we're gonna take a look uh, at each terminal in a bit more detail. And Terminal 1, we have two concourses. We have Concourse B and Concourse C. And then 2021, there were 8.3 million employments in Terminal 1, with the major uh, airline carrier being United Airlines and with the uh, Terminal 2, we have two main concourses, Concourse E and F. And in 2021, there were 5.1 uh, million employments uh, with the major airport or airline carriers, uh, currently uh, Delta, which we will be moving their operations to Terminal 5 in the fall. Also in Terminal 2, we have Air Canada and United Express. And we have Terminal 3, which has uh, four concourses, which are G, H, K, and L. And then they had uh, 11 million employments uh, last year. And some of their major carriers include Alaska, American, JetBlue, and Spirit. And next we have uh, Terminal 5, which is home to Concourse M, and a number of international and domestic carriers. Last year, they had 2.4 million employments, and uh, some of the major carriers include Aer Lingus, Aero Mexico, Emirates, uh, Korea Air, and Southwest, which actually back in uh, February 2021, they uh, came over to O'Hare. And with that, I'll pass it on to Mark Wright, who will touch on O'Hare concession store. Thank you, Daniel. Airport concessions at O'Hare and Midway are broken down into six categories. These categories include number one, the food and beverage category, which entails branded and non-branded entities and also includes airport, local and national brands. The second one is the specialty retail category that entails brands and concepts that supply things such as electronics, uh, apparel and books. The third category is the news and gift port category which includes entities for souvenirs and convenience. The fourth category is the service category, which includes entities such as spa, lounge, banking, ATMs, and foreign currency exchange. 
The fifth category is the duty free category, which includes brands that supply perfumes, jewelry, and confections. And then lastly, we have the advertising category, which entails indoor and outdoor advertising. This next slide is a concessions performance um, breakdown by category for all terminals of O'Hare. It lists sales figures for 2019, 2020, and 2021. The total number of stores and the total amount of square footage for each category. You can gauge how the impact of the pandemic affected, affected sales in 2020. Um, we did see an increase in travel for 2021, which as you see, increased sales from 2019. Presently, numbers continue to increase for 2022, and we continue to creep back to the 2019 figures. This next slide represents terminals one, two, and three, and where each concession is located. If you take a look at the color-coded legend at the bottom right, you can gauge where each concession by category is located in each terminal. The next couple of slides, you will see some of the different brands or services located here at O'Hare. Here in Terminal 1, you'll see a specialty retail location, the Johnston Murphy, and then you see a, a few food and beverage locations as, as well. In Terminal 2, we also have more food and beverage locations, a specialty retail location with the Mac, and then news and gifts location with the Hudson. Terminal three, um, more food and beverage locations, a service location with the spa, and you can see some of the indoor advertising in the uh, food court with the Xfinity. This next slide is uh, our terminal five, which was previously our international terminal, but has since added domestic flights from Southwest, Frontier, Spirit, and Delta to start flying out later this fall. So we removed the designation of international um, from the name. You can see the same color-coded legend, which you can also gauge where each concession um, by category is located. The center shows the arrival level concessions, and on the bottom left is the departure level concessions. On this next slide um, is our, our checkpoint area, which was recently renovated and now has a slightly different configuration. Um, with additional lanes, T5 will be able to accommodate the increasing amount of passengers expected this fall and moving forward. Then we have our duty uh, free location on the right. Next, you will see our food court and some of its food and beverage locations. And in the next slide, you'll see some of the other T5 food and beverage locations. Next, we will uh, hear from Russell Johnson, another project administrator on O'Hare 21. Thank you, Mark. Uh, so let's talk about O'Hare 21. O'Hare 21 sits at the um, end of O'Hare Modernization Program, or OMP, which allowed O'Hare to be the first airport in America to have six parallel one ways, three on both sides of the terminal. Some of the biggest expansion in the 60 years will happen during O'Hara 21 at, at ORD. We will increase grade capacity from 195 to 220. We will reduce security wait times, improve screening for passengers, and reduce airfare congestion. What you see currently is our multimodal facility, or NMF. It's our enhanced rental car facility. It was completed in November of 2018. It houses our airport rental car operations and 2,600 economy parking spaces. Our beautiful lobby at the MMF has space for all of our passengers' rental car needs. It will soon have a convenient succession for all of our travel and rental car public. The RFP for this opportunity was on our website at www flychicago.com, click on the About Chicago link, click on the Bids and Contracts link, then click on to register, click here to bid, you, bid alerts. This information will be discussed and described a little bit more in detail later on in the presentation. Let's talk about where we are now. 
So we look at, we started with concourse three, a, a terminal three, concourse L, which is in the center of the slide you're looking at right now. It houses our L concourse. And the L stinger was increased to add seven gates for American Airlines. Our O'Hara 21 project is a $10 billion investment. Next to the L stinger on the far right hand side is our Terminal 5 expansion, which is a $1.2 billion investment, which includes uh, Terminal 5. Next on our left hand side of the screen, we have our future investments, which are our Satellite 2, our Satellite 1, and our STAR, our O'Hara Global Terminal Concourse. These investments all include expansion of airport concession programs. To be informed about these investments, it's imperative that you register for web alerts. What you're looking at now is a rendering of our futuristic star of ORD 21, our global terminal. Let's talk about where we are right now, our T5 expansion. The T5 expansion broke ground in March of 2019. Again, it's a $1.2 billion expansion. On the right-hand part of your screen, you'll see our 350-square-foot extension of Terminal 5, which added 10 more gates. On the right-hand side of our screen, uh, we have refurbished and will continue to refurbish 750,000 square feet of space, which will give us 70% more lounge space and 75% more concession space and passenger amenities. As part of the 750,000 square feet development, as mentioned earlier, Delta Airlines will be moving this fall from Terminal 2 to Terminal 5. And again, if you want to be a part of these opportunities, you need to register for web alerts on our website. The concept you're drawing you're looking at right now shows the outside of Terminal 5 where our 10 new gates are housed. What you don't see are the refurbished Delta home on the west side of the terminal. The new gates will allow for larger planes to land at O'Hara, increasing passenger flow and revenue for all of our Terminal 5 concessions. You are viewing what the inside of Terminal 5 is and will look like once completed. Who often have passenger whole rooms with many transcendent amenities. This new expansion will be well lit, spacious, comfortable, and has an enhanced experience for all passengers. Up next, we have Daniel Perez to update you on Midway International Airport concessions. Thank you. Thanks, Russell. And I'll give you a, a look at our operations at Midway. Midway International Airport is a leading airport for point-to-point -point air service in the U.S. In 2019, prior to COVID-19, Midway served approximately 21.8 million passengers. The total number of carriers serving Midway uh, is stable and post-COVID, while thus nation served has increased, such as with Frontier Airlines back in April, uh, for example, they uh, added nonstop daily service to Atlanta, Dallas, Denver, Las Vegas, Ontario, California, Phoenix, Tampa, Trenton, New Jersey, Fort Lauderdale, and Orlando. In Q20, or Q2 2021, Midway had direct flights scheduled to 72 U.S. destinations and 10 international destinations. Southwest Airlines represents about 90% of the capacity at Midway. Um, as of July 2021, passenger uh, traffic through the PSA checkpoint has been uh, approximately 20 or 90% compared to the previous year. Midway Airport is home to eight airlines with over 40 active gates. The airlines are Southwest, Delta, Frontier, Porter, Polaris, North Country, Public Charters, Allegiant Air, and Avalo. Now I'm going to take a, a, a quick dive into our uh, Midway Modernization Program, Burbank. 
Uh, this uh, $333 million program is the first term of investment in nearly two decades at Midway. The concessions redevelopment program will grow permanent employment opportunities from 700 to 1400. ACDBE participation is 56%, which is amongst the highest in the nation, which is a truly an amazing accomplishment. And uh, we have the passenger security checkpoint expansion. It's brought over 2.8K uh, uh, construction jobs to, to date. And the terminal parking garage enhancement has brought uh, nearly uh, uh, 3,000 construction jobs to date. And uh, development is ongoing at Midway with the, uh, our uh, construction redevelopment program. Uh, with construction uh, gearing up. And with that, I will pass it over to Michael Stein to touch on the concessions program at Midway. Good afternoon, my name is Michael Stein. I'm the project administrator for CDA, and I will briefly be explaining our concessions program at Midway Airport. The structure of the concessions program at Midway is a little different from the concessions model at O'Hare. In this case, Midway Partnership was selected as a developer and operator of Midway's concession program following a request for proposal process that began in 2015 and was approved by City Council in 2017. Midway Partnership is investing $75 million to redevelop, to redevelop and expand the entire concessions program for Midway, which includes food and beverage, news and gifts, specialty realty, real <laughs> retail, personal services, and other public amenities. Midway's program is bolstering over a 56% ACDBE participation rate, which is the highest in the nation. As Daniel said, when the redevelopment program has been completed, it's estimated that the permanent jobs at Midway will have doubled from 1,400 to 700. Midway will have 70,000 square feet of concession space, which is double of what it had before, and the number of stores will increase from 47 to 70. To date, 30 new concession units have been constructed, and in December of 2020, mobile food ordering was introduced to allow passengers to order ahead for pickup at the concessionaire or have the food delivered to their gate. This next slide breaks down midway concession performance by categories from the last three years, 2019, 2022, and 2021. Categories are food and beverage, news and gifts, specialty realty, <laughs> retail services. There's a line for the total number uh, of revenue brought in by the concessionaires and then indoor advertising. As you can see, there was a dip in 2020, but we have been trending back up since 2021. We're also having a strong 2022 with very good numbers. With God's mercy, the worst will be behind us. The next slide shows Midway's newly built units. Prior to COVID, the concessions redevelopment program had constructed 27 new concession units, which consisted of 19 food and beverage, seven retail, and one service, which was a shoe hospital. Midway currently has 56 units open. The open units are a mixture of old and new construction, which provides a high level of service throughout the airport. And currently, there are more new units under redevelopment. This next slide showcases some of our newer build outs. Starting from the top left, we have Sarah's Candies. To the right of it, we have Harry Carey Shortstops. There's a Hudson Nonstop, which is powered by Amazon's Just Walk Out technology. We have Hubbard Inn, Nuts on Clark and one of our newest additions, Tallboy Tacos, which opened in March. Okay, 
Now we're going to move on to the process to operate the concession. Companies have several ways to operate as a concessionaire. One option is you can operate as a single operator. This is where you lease space directly from the airport. Option two is called a joint venture. This is where a company forms a partnership with another company to lease and operate a concession. The third option is where you operate as a subtenant. Your company leases from a larger concessionaire and operates as its subtenant. Next, we need to determine how you would operate. You can operate as a franchisee, like companies like McDonald's and Dunkin' Donuts. Option two, you can enter into a license agreement with brands like Pompeo Grill, Harry Carries, or Publican. The third option is you can operate as a regional or local brand, where you bring a neighborhood favorite like Nuts on Clark, Billy Bill Tavern, or Berghoff here to the airport. And then the fourth option is you can operate as your own unique brand concept that only exists at the airport like our artist bar and Chicago Cubs bar and grill. The next slide identifies the steps it takes to become a concessionaire. First step is CDA identifies a location that's available for lease. Next, CDA would issue a request for proposal, which is also known as an RFP. Then respondents would prepare and properly submit their proposals. CDA will evaluate the responses submitted and select the concessionaire from the group. Then the selected concessionaire and CDA will finalize the lease agreement together. CDA would then need to obtain approval from city council. Once approved, concessionaires would submit construction plans that comply to CDA's construction standards would be reviewed by CDA's construction design team. Once given approval from CDA, concessionaires can begin construction, file for all required permits, pass all city inspections, and then open for business at the airport. Our goals for the concession program are as follows. We want to optimize revenues at the airports and optimize revenues for the local economy. We want to maximize ACDB participation. We want to provide opportunities for local brands and local, local operators. Of course, we want to have high quality products and services. We want to have high quality facility designs and also pro promote environmental sustainability. We want to increase the variety of offerings at the airports. We want to pick concessionaires that showcase the character of Chicago to the traveling public. We want to provide customer service that's first class and provide fair pricing to the traveling public and the employees who work at the airport. The things you need to consider when operating at the airports. You need to determine your hours of operation and how to schedule your team of employees properly so you have adequate coverage. You must be prepared to properly follow all the badging and security requirements at the airport. You need to consider how your employees will be getting to work so you have a stable workforce. Will they be taking public transportation or will they be using the employee parking lots? Are these costs you expect them to absorb or would you reimburse them for that. And finally, you need to think through your logistics to have the most efficient way to have your goods delivered and stored. And you also must think through the most effective process to have your waste and recyclables removed. And that will move us on to Mr. Joe Crump to talk about elements of our proposal. Thank you, Michael. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joseph Crump. I'm with Unison Retail Management, and I'm going to spend a few minutes to talk about uh, things that you really need to consider when you're preparing a proposal 
if you're interested in doing business here at the airport and you want to operate a concessionaire, be prepared to develop and submit a proposal. And so right now I'm going to cover 10 key areas, um, elements that need to be included in your proposal. One is a cover letter, just kind of introducing yourself, what the concept is, what you're offering to the airport. Number two, um, to talk about your experience and qualification statements. Before I go further, one of the things, the RFP that CDA will put out for the concessions will include these requirements, so you don't have to write them down. But I think it's important that uh, we go over them. Uh, the methods and management of operations, how are you gonna run it? How are you gonna manage it? Who's gonna do it? Um, hours of operation, kind of what um, Michael talked about, You know, who are your key people? Um, how are you going to match staff it during uh, peak times, you know, as flights come and go and crowds come and go throughout the airport? The most Im important part of this is the concessions development proposal, and that includes the store concept and design. You know, what concept are you trying to do, uh, bring into the airport? What's it going to look like? How much are you going to pay the airport for um, leasing the space at the um, for the concession? And then how much you, you plan to do in sales and you know net income and cash flow. Uh, we're very it's very important that everyone be successful here at the airport. We have a lot of uh, passengers, but we want to kind of understand what do you think you can do relative to um, you know sales potential uh, for your concept. And then you know how do you plan to invest in capital into that space, and how do you plan to finance it? The fifth element of the proposal should be the airport concessions disadvantaged business enterprise participation plan. And I'm gonna to touch on this a little bit later in the presentation, more specifics. Um, six professional references, you know, many of you may be operating restaurants and stores on the street. Uh, be great to have your landlords or people that you've leased from to give good references for you. Any exceptions? So there may be some requirements that we identify an RFP that you may have an exception to. This gives you an opportunity to list those um, and then clean it up with eight, nine, and 10. You know, it's a pretty self-explanatory self financial statements, business information statement, and a proposal affidavit. I guess I can do the next slide, is it? Um, so when submitting a proposal, the RFP will list um, minimum qualifications. And, I, and this is very important that everybody gets this because if you can't pass these qualifications, you can't go any further in the process. So uh, the, the most recent RFP we issued, we required people to have at least three years of experience in the proposed business. Now that could be, you know, if you're in joint venture, uh, we would say whoever owns 51% of the joint venture needs to at least meet this requirement. Ideally, it'd be great if 100% of the owners do, but that's the minimum. Um, there needs to be minimum sales in your existing business. So we don't like startups. Uh, startups, you know, for the most part, it, I think on average, it takes you about three years to really stabilize. Most of them go out of business after the first year and a half. So we want a company that has been established, can demonstrate capacity and the ability to attract uh, sales and customers. And then financial capability. Can you pay for this? Do you have the cash or the capital or maybe uh, debt or lending services that can provide the capital to make sure you can complete the build out, which is critical and, um, you know, provide working capital uh, to support, you know, payroll and, and future needs. And then the ACDB plan. This is critical. Uh, in the past, uh, I'm going to say past two RFPs that we've issued, we've had a minimum uh, participation plan of 32%. Um, and so if you don't provide one, um, if you don't meet these minimum qualifications, your proposal will automatically be disqualified. Next. Let's talk about compensation to the city. Uh, let's see, we had, what, 84 million people coming through here in 2019. So there's a lot of people. So we we want to make sure that we're giving you prime space and that you, we're being compensated accordingly. Um, part of that compensation is base rent. Right now, O'Hare, we're starting at about $50 a square foot and it escalates 3% annually. If you had to do a, if you're thinking about a pro forma, our average square foot, uh, square footage is around 750 to 790 per square feet. So that'll give you an idea for that base rent. 
Then there's a license fee. And this is a combination of two factors. One is a proposed percentage of sales. And then we have something that's kind of unique here. It's called minimum annual guarantee. And that's, a, 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 and I'll touch, give you an example of what that is in a few minutes, but pretty much that's a minimum amount of rent that the city expects to receive for that space. We do marketing activities for all of our concessionaires, and that's a half a percent of sales. And then something that's anticipated in the future is a central distribution fee. Uh, we're going to, you know, kind of combine all of the distribution activities uh, for safety and security purposes. And so the concessionaires to get the food delivered and what have you to their spaces, they'll be required to pay a fee of that amount. Um, we will set the license fee, the range. The percentage of sales and the minimum manual guarantee in the RFP. Next, please. So I know Russell talked about, or I'm sorry, Mark talked about some of the uh, concession types. So what I'd like to do is give you kind of a range of where things are relative to the term and potentially proposed mags and proposed rents. And what I will say is uh, given what's happening in the environment, given the increase in minimum uh, wages and uh, cost of construction and all the other attended costs. Uh, the city is very con uh, concerned and wants to ensure that that our concessionaires are successful. And so you may see some reduction in some of the proposed rents. But most recently, we were looking at on a full service restaurant, 12 to 15 percent, uh, fast food and casual, 14 to 17 percent, excuse me, branded coffee like a Starbucks. You can see the percentage there, snack bars, uh, candy and confection. So it, uh, I would probably say it's reasonable to uh, expect between a 1% and 2% reduction in all of those uh, percentage rents. Terms, uh, we, we're saying seven to 10 years, but I think given the cost of construction, I think you're gonna see more 10 year terms for uh, sit down restaurants and QSRs, um, branded coffees, some of the snacks, it just depends on the size of the facility and the potential sales uh, opportunity, uh, you may see between seven and 10 years. Next, please. Um, for more of our specialty retail, you know, news and gift is five years, specialty retail is five years. You can see the proposed rents. I think, um, I think all of these are kind of a little bit under pressure. Um, you know, we typically would see uh, significant cost in the kitchen, right, associated to a fast food or a, a, a restaurant. But the cost of construction is going across the board, so you may see you may see some uh, increases in the terms of up to seven years on some of our future uh, offerings. Next, so let's talk about the elements of the license fee. We talked, you know, that compensation piece that I talked about earlier, where it's between the is really uh, when we issue the RFP, uh, we may set the mag or we may have you bid it, but whatever the case, um, it's the, the, the concessionaire is required to pay the greater of the mag or percentage rent. And uh, so let's say you bid your proposal, you were successfully uh, awarded the space um, and you said, uh, CDA, we're gonna pay 15% of sales. And the mag, CDA set the mag at $100,000. First year or year two, you come out of, uh, and your first year sales are $800,000. So 15% is 800, of $800,000 is $120,000. Your rent compensation to the city for this portion of license fee would be $120,000. Let's say sales don't achieve 800, but you only hit half a million dollars. Well, that's only $75,000 $75, as a percentage of sales. But as you remember, the MAG, the minimum annual guarantee is $100,000 you'd be required to pay the $100,000. Next, please. Other considerations when you're thinking about your compensation to the city, um, we're saying average five to 10 years, the term is specified in RFP. I think it's reasonable to look at uh, most, most terms are now between seven and 10 years. Uh, you will have to pay Cook County leasehold tax and that's something, please do not, uh, ignore that. You need to put that into your uh, pro forma uh, and expect to, to pay that. Um, we don't necessarily collect that on behalf of the county. You're required to pay that directly to them, but um, make sure you include that in your pro forma. 
utilities, they're individually metered. So you got to pay for your own water, electric, gas, uh, at, you know, if it's applicable. We, historically, we've been looking at uh, for security deposit six months worth of bag. So on that $100,000 example on the slide before, that puts you at about, what, $50,000. Um, we, I think there's been some, um, a desire among CDA to reduce that to between three to four months. And I think that our last RFP, uh, we were down to three months. So there's some, there's some opportunity to see that security deposit decrease on ongoing in the future. And here, historical concession build out expenses. So, I, you know, I have to admit, we're going to have to update this slide. We have a thousand dollars a square foot. Everyone, it, you know, inflation has gone up. It's more like fifteen hundred dollars a square foot. So, uh, if you're going to run a pro forma, you know, when you hang up and say, "Hey, listen, this is something I think I can do," you know, take eight hundred square feet, throw in fifteen hundred dollars a square foot. That's going to be your capital cost. Um, it's expensive to build out here, but that, you know, I, I want people to understand what it really um, uh, entails. So, next, other considerations. So, we eighty four million people coming through. We want to ensure that people are treated fairly, our passengers. And so we ask people to uh, do annual pricing surveys. We want you to charge prices that are no higher than uh, what's charged downtown Chicago. Um, and so the RFP and the sample lease will give you specifics on that. Sustainability is critical. Um, CDA has adopted a green concessions policy. It's posted on the website. When you look at your design and construction uh, issues, you can also see this. Um, the um, SAM manual and or the green concessions manual, and that'll give you some directions on activities, uh, materials and things that, that need to be required or need to be used, uh, either in the construction of your space uh, and the product that you offer in that space um, and, and things that can, can really help the environment uh, and is healthy for both passengers, employees and the environment. Next. Next slide, please. ACDB. So many of you probably heard of um, uh, M and WBE. Well, the ACDB represents Airport Concessions Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Participation Plan. The FAA requires all concessions or all airports to um, have an opportunity or create an opportunity for ACDBs and those are, you know, for-profit companies that are at least 51% owned by a socially and economically disadvantaged individual and is managed in daily operations of the firm or controlled by the socially and economically disadvantaged individual who owns it. And so they want to make sure that they have opportunities to participate in concessions. And so uh, at O'Hare, um, our most recent goal has been 32%. So we want 32% uh, of all revenues attributed to a company that is AC, that's owned by an ACDB. Uh, so that's very important and something that you can't get past. Um, so I, you know, really, if you wanna dig into that, I would encourage you to make sure you understand what that requirement is. Some of you on the, on the call may, may qualify as an ACDB. Um, I would encourage you to consider that as well in your certification requirements. Uh, next. So some of this I kind of covered, um, it's a requirement based by the federal regu regulations. I talked about it's a goal that's established in all our RFPs. Um, Michael talked about the different ways that you can uh, participate as a concession, direct ownership, joint venture participation or subcontracts with ACDBs. And in this case, you can also purchase goods and services from ACDBs that does allow you to meet the goal. Um, that we established, as a, which was 32% our last RFP, and I expect that to be the goal going forward. Um, the ACDB section of the proposal is a pass-fail. Either you've met the 32% or you have it. If you come in at 50% or 100% ACDB participation, we love that, but it doesn't give you any greater advantage to, the, to another entity or proposer that at least meets the um, 32%. So I just want to point that out, but you must at least meet it in order to, in order for your proposal to be considered. Next. Here are a couple links for, um, you know, for certification. Um, 
you know, I believe we make this available so you can always uh, click on these links in the future and get more information on this. Next, please. Also, I know each of the presenters talked about signing up for the web alerts at www.flychicago.com. Proposals typically are due 90 days after posting. Um, that can vary depending on the amount of response and questions we receive. Um, and, you know, things occur, you know, there's a lot of construction taking place. So sometimes we may have to push the due date back, but uh, we usually post that information or send out web alerts. That's why it's critical for you to be on that, uh, signed up for the CDA web alerts. It'll keep you in the loop as to what is happening. After we issue the RFP, usually within a week or two after issuance, we have a pre-proposal meeting and we invite people to come and to participate. Uh, we talk more about the offering that has been outlined in the RFP, uh, and we also uh, take questions from the participants. Uh, and there may be some information that's not in the RFP that is in the pre-proposal. I mean, we typically will update the, um, the RFP in the future, but it's important that you attend if you plan to uh, participate or submit a proposal. The RFP deadline specific for the submission of questions, and then uh, we always ask that the questions be in writing, um, and that we, when we publish the answers, we publish it and issue it so everyone can benefit from the, from the information that's being provided to that, to that proposer. Next, here's some other resources. Uh, this will all be available. You know, please take advantage of them. Take a look at them. Uh, a lot of good information for you if you plan to operate an airport environment. Next. This is a picture of that web alert. Uh, make sure you go into flychicago.com for signups uh, and choose airport business contracting opportunities. Uh, there is also a drop for concessions. And um, I would encourage you to, to do the um, both, uh, but for definitely concessions. So. And next, that's it. Any questions? Thank you very much, Joe. This is Castalia again. We want to take the opportunity to thank all of you for being here today on behalf of Mayor Lori Lightfoot and Commissioner Ree and the entire concessions. Uh, team, we thank you. And now we're going to go into the question and answer uh, segment. Thank you so much. There are questions in the Q and A box and in the chat box. Would you like me to read them to you, or do, can you see them? Sure. Why don't you? I mean, why don't you read them to us, please? What if the business is only fit for airports and hasn't been implement, implemented yet? So the, it sounds like that's a startup. Am, am I getting that right? Um, as I said, I think during my part of the presentation, this is Joe, we don't like, we want companies that have been open a minimum of three years. Uh, we don't encourage startups because of the high failure rate of startups, even though the airport is a, you know, you have a lot of traffic, we wanna make sure all the bugs have been worked out before you try to come and operate in the airport. Is there any update on master concessionary? Is there any, up say that again? Oh, that is, yeah. I see, is there any update on master concession there? May I know what is the revenue share of master concessionaire pays at the airport? So master concessionaire is a term that is used for an uh, entity, a larger concessions company that um, may own and operate and develop multiple um, spaces, either within a specific category, you know, food and beverage or um, multiple categories. Uh, at O'Hare, we have HMS Hosts, who's the uh, Master concessionaire for uh, the food and beverage, uh, and our Hudson Retail Group is the master concessionaire for our retail space. So, um, you know, much of that is determined uh, by the airport, and it'll be reflected in the 
in the RFP, right? The type of package will be very specific in what we're looking for. Um, and, but, you know, that just depends on the request for proposal and the parameters outlined by the Department of Aviation at the time of issuance. Um, what is the website to register or receive notifications? That's the flychicago.com sign up for web alerts. And uh, I would encourage you to sign up for the concessions web alert if, in fact, that's what you're uh, interested in. It's, in. it's at the end of this presentation. I believe we're making this available. Is that correct? This presentation will be available on YouTube, on our YouTube page. That's youtube.com forward slash BACP, BACP tomorrow. Great. Yeah, go in there and, and pull those links down. I know, I think the slide or two before this, uh, it mentions where you can register for the web alert. So if I don't make $100,000 in sales for that year, then that means I have to pay the airport the balance. For example, if I make $60,000 in sales for the year, then I owe the airport $40,000? No, so um, you're back on the mag. So uh, it, it, Daniel, are you running the slide? Can you go back if you don't mind? Um, so the example that we had, the, the proposal you had to pay us 50% of sales and, it had, and, the, and the deal had a $100,000 minimum annual guarantee. So 15% of whatever your sales level is required. And if it's less than a, thank you. And if it's less than $100,000, then you have to uh, pay us that 100. So in this example, we'll go through it again. Um, 100,000 was the minimum annual guarantee or you pay us 15% of sales. You pay us the greater of those two, right? So if sales were 800 grand, that means at 15%, you would have earned $120,000 that you would have to pay us. If your sales only hit $500,000, then 15% of sales is only $75,000. You would have to pay us the difference to make up the $100,000. So, you know, 75,000 would come from the sales and then you'd have to, well, hundred thousand dollars would come from come from your sales. So um, that's that's not the greatest situation to be in, but um, that's we just want to present it so you understand uh, what the the what the mag is and how that can impact your profitability. Have more questions. What can I find a request for proposal if I want to see what it entails? Right, right now, we if you go to flychicago.com backslash RFP 2022, um, that's not on this uh, presentation, but if you go to Fly Chicago, we do have, um, you'll see two RFPs that are listed. Um, they're gonna be taken down soon. Be, uh, uh, we've got some upcoming activities, but uh, you can download one of them now and see kind of what we've talked about, some of the requirements, you know, some of the proposed terms, compensation, many things we talked about, they're listed on those RFPs that are posted on the website. Does a woman-owned company fall under the ACDBE? Yes, if, if she meets the... Um, if, if, the comp, if the company's owner meets the um, requirement of ACDB, uh, there's a personal net worth requirement, there's a revenue requirement, um, uh, then in fact, that's a possibility. But just to say that it's a woman-owned company does not necessarily mean that they're an ACDB company. The owner has to be, the owner, 51% owner has to be disadvantaged for that meet those disadvantaged requirements in order for, for them to qualify. Hi, y'all. We proposed a new business opportunity, baggage wrapping machines at O'Hare and Midway two years ago, and we're still waiting. 
Well, the reality is uh, CDA has priorities on uh, um, different services and things. And so there's no schedule as to, um, I mean, we've got a lot of RFPs that we're trying to issue a lot of services and things that we're trying to uh, bring into the airport, but some have a greater priority. And so, you know, all, all we can do is say, stay alert, you know, keep, make sure you keep signed up for the web alerts. And um, once something comes out that may fit that fit the product that you're looking to offer, then we would encourage you to, to bid. Thank you. So if 1500, if it's $1,500 per square feet and we want to get 800 square feet, would we need to spend $1.2 million? So I'm, I don't have a calculator. So you do, you multiply $1,500 per square foot times 800 square feet, and you're telling me it's $1.2 million. That's the, that's the product. Uh, then that's the number you would have to spend. Now it could be fourteen hundred, it could be two thousand, right? That depends on the design, the elements of the construct, you know, the elements that you're inputting into your space, um, your contractor. But you know, I want to give people kind of a realistic uh, view of what it costs to build. Um, and so, yeah, that's the product of that calculation. Then that's what it would be. Is there a way to temporarily have a table at the airport rather than have an opening, rather than open a concession long term? You know, we have looked at uh, pop ups, and um, um, you know, we've we haven't been able. Well, we were in the process of trying to implement some of those right before COVID, where we could bring in you know local small vendors and create an opportunity for them to sell their products or services on a you know, shorter term basis. Um, I think I would say right now, no, you just can't come in, but I would say, you know, sign up for the web alerts because I think you may see those opportunities coming up in the near future. Can I operate a child's playroom? as opposed to having a retail shop? So the offerings are based on the needs that the airport CDA determines. You know, we talk to our passengers all the time. We're conducting surveys. We're traveling to other airports, you know, to try to stay abreast of what, you know, needs the passengers may have. Um, and so we think we're offering um, in our RFPs opportunities to, to operate at the airport to meet the ones that we, you know, we've determined that this, that the passengers want, right? So um, a child service, I mean, we do have a play area that the CDA sponsors, but if at some point we feel that that's a concession or a service that we need to provide, you know, on a long longer term basis, and we want a third party to operate it, then we would issue the RFP to say that, yeah. It's just not based on what you want to operate. It's based on what the needs are at the airport, and what we think our passengers' needs are. Is the square foot rate paid monthly or annually? Uh, that's it. Well, you pay it monthly, right. These terms and steps apply to vending machines as well? Um, no, so uh, it depends. Uh, every concession opportunity may have a different twist on either compensation term, some of the requirements. Um, you know, because you've got a vending unit, there's no construction, right? Um, uh, but we do have the same similar compensation requirements, uh, similar, um, you know, store hours, they're always open, right? So what's more important for a vending machine is not so much the hours of operation, but the fact that the machines are full uh, or filled during, you know, times when people are in the airport. Um, so, you know, there's a little tweak here and there, depending on the type of concession, but for vending, um, I think most of the requirements are similar.
Um, what are the size ranges of the stands that are available? The stands? Um, so we have uh, full sit down restaurants as large as 5,000 square feet. We have uh, spaces, you know, 100 square feet. Uh, we have vending machines, which are even smaller. So I think I gave a number of close to 800 square feet is like the average um, that we have. And so, but it ranges, you know, from large to small. How does international experience count? for the opportunity to operate a concession? I think it's important. All experience is important. Um, Chicago here is an international airport. Um, you know, I think Daniel talked about the various uh, uh, foreign airline flags that fly in and out of O'Hare. So um, if you, you know, people from other countries may have different needs uh, or preferences. So you know, if you can tap into some of those things and identify that need, I think that that's that's to that's important. But experience operating in airports anywhere, I think it's always beneficial when you come to O'Hare. My company is an aviation support service company, not a public facing retail business. Who can we contact about leasing non-public space at O'Hare? Um, we have a real estate department and um, I'm not sure. Yeah, we, we have a real estate department. You would have to reach out to them to find uh, opportunities or chances to uh, lease space, non-public space. What if the first time operator has secured a new franchise agreement with an established company? Would the three years experience of operating a business still be required? Yes. What if I had a partnership, but we recently split up and I'm moving forward with our own ventures? Um, would you consider that a startup? No, as long as the at least 51% of the owners have experience within the last, now, let me say this, we may require more experience uh, in some, in certain packages or different RFPs, um, you know, because of the complexity uh, of the opportunity, the amount of money that has to be invested, right, those types of risks, as the, re as the risk increases, we want to make sure we've got people that can make necessarily make it. But if you've got, um, um, if you meet the minimum, so if you at least have, you know, let's I think, think in this example, we use three years of experience in the last, you know, at, normally we'll say we want, we want three continuous years of experience in the last three to five years. If you meet that requirement, that's fine. Do you require we use a Pacific contractor to do the concession build out? I own a construction company and I cannot see the space costing $1,500 per square feet. I can't either, but trust me. <laughs> um, it's, um, there's a lot of factors that you don't, that you run into at the airport that you won't see on the street. Um, but uh, concessions companies are allowed to bid their own, you know, go out to the to the to the public and have competitive bids for their concession spaces. You're not you, we don't require anyone to use any specific contractor. Um, it doesn't look like I think I went through all of the questions in the chat. There was a lot of thank you for the information. Thanks for the presentation. They learned a lot. This is a lot of information. Thank you so much. So um, this is Castalia again. We just wanted to make reference to a couple of points. We spoke a lot about becoming an ACDBE and opportunities for ACDBEs. 
So here are some resources. Please take a snapshot, take a look into these websites. These are tools that are going to help you. Okay, becoming a certified ACDBE, www.chicago, M mwdbe.com and uh, find an ACDBE certified business, www.chicago.mwdbe.com. And we have additional resources here. Um, and then the other point that I really wanted to make reference to was signing up for alerts. If you want to get these alerts on given ongoing opportunities, please sign up for via uh, the CDA web alerts at flychicago.com slash sign up. When these opportunities come about, you will get an alert and it's your opportunity to, um, you know, take opportunity of these wonderful um adventures, I want to say, at Brazil here in Midway Airport. Keep in mind that there's a lot of foot traffic. We're getting um, very close to our, our uh, pre-pandemic numbers. So we spoke about uh, pricing at the airport and all of that. There's a lot of people who are traveling these days. These, again, are opportunities for our traveling guests to take advantage of, of the goodies that are here in place. Um, so it's, it's a huge adventure. Um, so we really wanna thank you for joining us today and for your questions. And we look forward to doing business with you. Have a wonderful day. And please reach out if you have questions. Thanks. Okay, I don't see any more questions. Oh, wait, we have one more. It just came in. Following my previous questions, we operate a retail and F&B locations with the Mexican airports. We're looking to expand to foreign airports. I want to be sure that we are able to participate in this process. Um, you wanna make, so, you have experience at other airports out of out of the country. Um, sure, that should make you eligible. Um, you know, we check references and things like that. But if you have the the background and can lay that out and display, you know, uh, share your background and stuff with us, that's I think that's important. I hope I answered your question. We have a lot of companies from other areas uh, bidding on spaces and stuff like that. So this you wouldn't be the first. No. Thank you. I think that's it. Yep. Okay. Now I think we're done. This time for real. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much um, for today's presentation. To all of our attendees, if to receive credit for today's webinar, please send an email to BACP Outreach at cityofchicago.org. Again, that's BACP Outreach at cityofchicago.org. To learn more about our upcoming webinars, please visit chicago.gov forward slash business education. Thank you again to the team over in aviation and thanks to everyone for attending today.